This lesson is very important because you need to understand the various alarms that are available to you and you need to be able to interpret the information that it provides and be able to behave in a way that helps keep you, your family, and your team alive should a disaster be presenting itself. So pay attention and hopefully this information will help you understand emergency alerts and alarms better. The lesson objective is that students should be able to discuss various disaster alarm and warning systems to include the emergency alert systems, the wireless emergency alerts, the NOAA weather radio, smartphone apps, and local sirens. The flow within the lesson is basically the same, meaning that we're gonna cover each one of those things in a progressive order, starting with the emergency alert system and going through the wireless emergency alerts, NOAA weather radio, smartphone apps, and local sirens. We will also discuss what the different type of, of alerts mean, such as advisory, watch, and warning. Let's start with the emergency alert system. This has been around for a long time. I remember this when I was a child. We used to see it on the TV or hear it on the radio when we would be traveling. It is an alert system that was uh, established for the President of the United States and major players in the state and local government should a national emergency occur or there be a significant local disaster or a public safety alert that they wanted to put out to everyone. It is also now used for Amber Alerts. The emergency alert system basically works on cable, satellite, or broadcast television, and AM, FM, and satellite radio. It's limited to those areas. When it comes on on the TV, there's usually a black and white symbol, and then somebody will make a statement. If it were an actual emergency, it, would, it wouldn't say this is a test. It would tell you what the emergency was. It would tell you what your risks are and uh, what type of behavior uh, they would expect you to take. The emergency alert system, like I say, has been around for a long time, but it has its limits because it's only broadcast on basically the TV and the radio. To expand the ability to alert the citizens, they created the wireless emergency alert system in about 2012. This is something that's, a, that's part of a smartphone, and most smartphones that you purchase today has it on them. This system works in the same way. It's utilized by federal, state, and local authorities when a national emergency is occurring, where there's significant local disasters, public safety alerts are needed to be given, or there's an amber alert. It comes on the smartphone in the way of a text, and it, it alerts you about these potential risks. You may need to check your smartphone and see if it has the WEA app on it or not, but the odds are, unless you have something really old or uh, very simple, the odds are that it is available there. Here we see a picture of my smartphone. Now this is on an iPhone. And to determine if I have this or not, I go into settings and then into notifications. And in the notifications area down at the bottom, we see that there's a government alert area and that allows me to toggle and tell the WEA what type of information I wanna be alerted to. Amber alerts, emergency alerts, public safety alerts, and uh, so on. This is, a, again, a very good thing to have on your smartphone, but uh, you need to check and see if it's on yours. And you might have to Google it because I don't know where it's at on every smartphone that's out there. So you might have to Google to find out where it is available on your phone so you can look and see which type of alerts you might be receiving from this. Both of these are great systems. Again, it goes uh, across the airway on the uh, televised uh, networks through the radio systems, and then also on the smartphone. So the emergency alert system and the wireless emergency alert system are a great way to get this information out to the general public.
There's other things that you can use, but uh, these are things that you may need to purchase or download onto your phone. To start with, there's the NOAA Weather Radio, which I have. I have two different types. I have one that's stationary at my home and then one that I can take when I'm traveling. The one that's stationary at the home is plugged into the wall, but it also has backup batteries to it. This is a, a bunch of radio stations that are owned by the US government, and they basically provide 24 seven weather and alert information related to national disasters, technological disasters, public safety, and AMBER alerts. The NOAA radio, a great thing to have. I strongly encourage you to have one of these in your home, especially if you live in a high-risk area for tornadoes or tsunamis or something along that lines. Here's a picture of the one that I have in my house very good system. When it goes off, it, it goes off. And if I'm in the house, I can definitely hear it. And then it provides me information, basically telling me, you know, what the potential problem is, when I can expect that risk to occur, and what type of behavior would diminish that risk for me. A good thing for me to have, but when I'm on the road or not in the house, it's not going to be available to me. If I'm on the road, I usually take this portable system. It's, it's crank operated, but it also has batteries to it. And it, it allows me to access local weather through the NOAA weather radio system and it, in the same way it will send off a loud alert and tell me what the potential disaster is, when I can expect it, and what type of behavior would help diminish that disaster risk to me. So a good system, both of these, one that I have at home, one I take on the road, good things to have and I strongly encourage you, especially if you live in a high risk area, to have these available. Another thing that I would encourage you to do is to uh, download a smartphone app that will provide you a lot of information. I strongly encourage you to check out the FEMA emergency app that, that's uh, easy to download on your phone, provides you a lot of information. The FEMA app is, is like the other systems in the respect that it's gonna let you know of uh, natural disasters, technological disasters, public safety or AMBER alerts. And it is something that you can provide information to telling it where you're at and what type of alerts you wanna hear about. On uh, this app here, once I've downloaded, I go in and tell it where I live and it has a toggle system where I can tell it what type of disasters I wanna be alerted about should they be in my area. You can provide multiple different locations in the app or you can change the locations if you're traveling or moving from one place to another. You can change your toggles too. I usually just toggle all and by toggling all it doesn't mean I'm going to get a bunch of nonsense because if you toggle all and it's not something that's potentially going to happen in your area you're not going to get alerts or information related to it. So it's, it's no big deal but you could determine or isolate which ones you want to hear about um, if you're if you're concerned about that. The FEMA app's a great app, and I, I really encourage you to have it. Basically, I've programmed where I'm at, i programmed what I wanna hear about. When something happens, such as the example here, a frost advisory is taking place, it's telling me the potential is gonna happen, it's telling me the time frame for it to happen, and it's also gonna give me details about it and tell me what type of appropriate behavior I might need to take to diminish this risk to uh, myself, my family, or any team that I might be on. Good stuff, good stuff. I really encourage you to have this. There's also other apps besides the FEMA app. Weather app can do the same thing. Also, the Ring security system that I have at my house does the same thing. I don't necessarily think you need multiple backups like that, but it never hurts to, to have backup systems in place. These smartphone apps are a good thing to have, and I strongly encourage you to at least look at the FEMA app and download it on your phone and set it up for where you're at. The other alert systems that we might see would be local sirens. These are more specific to areas where a threat such as a tornado or a tsunami might occur, where we need to let people know immediately that this is happening. These sirens have about a mile radius around their location. They're very loud and it'd be hard to miss them if you're in that area. Multiple sirens will be set out in a community where the risk is a problem. If these sirens go off, you have to be able to interpret what it means to know what type of action you take because there's not gonna be any print, there's not gonna be any voice saying, this is what's happening, this is the time frame, the time frame would be immediate, and this is the behavior to take. So you need to be able to interpret the siren based on the sound that you're hearing. They usually last about three minutes and based on the tone, whether it's a solid tone or an interval tone, you, you should be able to know what to do. If you, it is a wailing tone, six seconds high, six seconds low, and it lasts for three minutes. This usually means for the tornadoes that it's a tornado watch. Everything is out there that makes this risk a, a great potential. If it's a steady tone lasting three minutes, this is saying not only is everything here, 
but it's been combined together and created the perfect storm basically where this is either going to happen or it is happening and you need to take action and you need to take action now so if a watch occurs that means you need to be aware you need to be getting ready and prepared should it go into a warning level. Once you hit the warning level, that means action needs to be taken and needs to be taken now. And we'll be talking about the different types of actions that should be taken when we get to each potential disaster in later lessons of this course. Here's what a tornado watch siren would sound like. Realize that not all communities use a siren to indicate that a tornado watch is in effect. <laughs> Here's what a tornado warning siren would sound like. These sirens are a very good thing. Uh, they, they are very uh, valuable, but you need to be able to interpret the information because the sirens are also used by the volunteer fire departments. And you don't want to be going down in your basement and getting your storm shelter every time that the volunteer fire department is responding to a field fire or something along that lines. So make sure that you have an awareness of what the alarm would sound like for the type of disaster event that has great potential in your area. So basically, when these happen, they're going to come in one of three ways. They're either going to be an advisory or a statement, a watch or a warning. And if they're on the emergency alert system, it's going to be vocal. You're going to hear it on the TV or the radio. If it's on the wireless emergency alert system, it's going to be a text that comes on your phone that's going to tell you whether it's a statement or an advisory or a statement, a watch or a warning. And the same thing with the FEMA apps. Uh, um, it's going to come on your phone as it's kind of like a text type thing. If you have the NOAA radio, that's going to be audible and it's going to tell you all this information. And then finally, if it's a siren, then you're going to have to be able to interpret the siren to know whether it's a watch or a warning. Bottom line, if it's an advisory or a statement, there's a low risk of a problem and it is expected, but it's a low risk. If it's a watch, it says, be ready. Everything is in place and there's a great potential that this could happen and you need to uh, be getting prepared in case it does happen. A warning basically means you need to take action now. The hazard is in your area, is either occurring right now or is expected to occur, occur shortly. Again, these are, these are very important in tsunami and tornado areas. There may be some value of these in earthquake areas also. And remember, watch means everything's uh, in place and it could occur. You need to start preparing. Warning means warning, warning, warning. This is probably going to happen. It is happening. You need to take action now. So don't get them mixed up because I know in the early days for me, I used to have a lot of problem remembering which was watch and which was warning. So try to try to put it in your mind. Watch. I'm watching. Warning. Take action. So this lesson, we've spent uh, just a couple minutes discussing the various alarm systems and what each system means. We talked about the emergency alert system, which is probably the oldest one out there. It has uh, been around for a long time, and it is the system that comes up on the TV and the radio. It's used by the President of the United States and major players at the state and local level to disseminate risk and information related to national disasters or significant local emergencies or significant announcement or Amber Alerts. This system is still in effect, but if you're not watching TV or listening to the radio, you're gonna miss it. To uh, help make it more available to the public, they created the Wireless Emergency Alert System, which basically does the same thing as the Emergency Alert System, but it comes on your phone, and it's been around since about 2012. Realize not all smartphones have this, but I, I, I expect most would because it's been over a decade since this was put in place, but you need to check your smartphone and see if it's on there. I gave you some examples of how, how I found it on my phone. If you can't find it, you need to Google where is the Government Emergency Alert System on my type of phone. 
phone and I'm sure um, you'd be able to find it based on that Google. The other potential systems that we discussed were the NOAA weather radio, a system that is US government owned radio stations that provide 24 seven weather alerts and weather information. The smartphone app is uh, basically a backup to the uh, wireless emergency alert should you have that on your phone. I, I believe you should get one of these, especially the FEMA emergency app, as it uh, is gonna be uh, very valuable to you should you uh, be in an area where these risks could occur. Remember the smartphone apps are something where you put in where you're at, you toggle what type of disasters you're concerned about, and then when they occur, they're going to tell you again what the potential problem is, when it might occur, what to expect and what type of behavior would uh, diminish your risk. Very good thing to have. I strongly encourage you to download the FEMA app on your phone. Local sirens, if you live in an area where you um, have a significant tsunami and uh, tornado risk and potentially earthquake risk, these local sirens provide a lot of information. The only problem with the local siren is you need to be able to know what it's saying based on how it's presenting and then what type of behavior is expected based on that sound because it's not gonna tell you. Then we talked about three basic types of alarms that might be provided and that is the advisory which is uh, basically information about a potential risk but it's a low risk. The watch which says hey just be watchful everything's coming together, there's a good risk that this could occur, and then the warning, which means, hey, it's either happening or it's going to happen, and uh, again, in any of these alerts, they're gonna tell you the time frame for the expected problem, where it's potentially gonna occur, what to expect, and what type of behavior would diminish its risk. Hopefully this lesson has increased your understanding of alert systems, how to interpret the meaning behind them, because proper preparation is the key to success, and that would include understanding alert systems, how to interpret them, and what type of behavior would help you should a disaster come into your area. Important stuff, stuff that I would encourage you to put in your mind and make sure that it's available to you at your home and should you be away from the home. If you have any questions about this or any other lessons to this point, feel free to email me at greg at preparedservice.com. I uh, will make every attempt to respond to you within 72 hours. You stay safe, be happy, and take care of yourself.